Hello there guys, welcome back to Yo Sakura. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and in this one I'm going to take a little bit of a break from modeling the Rubik's Cube and we are going to dwell into how to work with cameras, do some rendering and lighting. So let's get started. Now back here in Houdini, the first thing I want to do before starting with our composite is to create a camera. There are a few ways in which you can do this. In my view, I can just press tab and type in cam and this will bring up a couple of different camera options. I can just select the camera and place it where I want. By default, it faces the negative Z axis. Apart from this, I have the same option in my shelf. I can click the camera, position it where I want. But this is not very interactive. To make an interactive position for the camera, just place your view or position your view in such a way that you want your camera to be placed and then control click on the camera. What this does is that it places the camera interactively from that point. But as you can see, as soon as it started moving around, my camera is left right there but my view is moving. To make it much more interactive, like uh, you want to be in your camera, but if this angle is wrong and you want to change the camera position, you can turn on this lock here in the view and now reposition the camera and you can see all the values here for the camera changes. That means my camera position is really changing. You can also use the gizmo here in the view to make changes. Now after creating the camera, the next step would be to put in a background image. For this, go to your view bar on the right. Here at the bottom you have an option called the display option. So opening this up, we have a section called the background. This is where you can assign backgrounds to all the different views and cameras. Here you can see that we have the camera view and here we have the option to select an image. But the problem right now is that this option is disabled. The reason for this is you might have several cameras in your scene and you might want different background images for each camera. So for this reason to make sure Houdini understand which camera you want to work with, go into the particular camera you want to work, turn the lock on. This is what will enable this display or this uh, input field. So now I can go browse my image and then select it. So as you can see I immediately got my background in. So now that I have my background uh, I need to place the Rubik's Cube properly using the camera. But the problem is the Rubik's Cube is a very small object and it does not actually represent anything in my live scene. So it'll be better if I have an actual plane like a grid which is going to sit on top of this table. So for this I can just turn on the construction plane. And um, sometimes when I turn the construction plane on what happens is that it comes at an odd angle like this. The reason for this is when I was actually working with the cube, I was working with isolation. So because of which when I came out of the cube sub context, the grid was placed exactly at that angle. So to bring it back to the original position, all I need to do is go up to the top view menu. Here under set construction plane, I need to tell revert to defaults. This puts the construction plane back to the default position. But now, the Rubik's Cube is actually passing through the grid. It's not actually sitting on top of it. If it was sitting on top, it would be much easier. So for this, let me go ahead, select the cube. I'll go ahead and move it on top. And you can see here the value is almost 0.5. So I'll just type in 0.5 so it's sitting exactly on top of my grid. Going back to my camera, all I now need to do is make sure my grid looks like it is aligned with the background. So for that I'll turn the camera lock on and now try to position it making it look like my grid is aligned with my background. So I'll just place it in as best as I can. Remember that we are just faking in all the effects so the camera details and all those are still wrong but because it's a still image we can make it look like it's sitting on top of the table. So now I go ahead and place the camera exactly where it looks like the cube might be sitting on top of the table. So now that we have our scene set up we should take care to not mess it up while we're working. And one of the easiest ways we might mess up the scene is by moving the camera casually and suddenly when we go for rendering the 3D objects no longer match the real world and we had to redo the whole thing. So just to avoid this kind of a crazy issue the easiest solution would be just to turn off the camera lock here on the top. But this does not guarantee that we are not moving the cameras using the rotate and translate tools. So just to avoid the whole problem just select your final camera which you have go to the translate and rotate options and lock them. 
to lock them, just right click and tell lock parameters. What locking does is that it no longer lets the computer change any of these values. So these values are locked in. So what this helps us do is if I come back into my view and try rotating around, you can see I can move around and see anything I want in the scene. But as soon as I let go of the mouse, my camera snaps back to the previous position and rotation. So therefore it can no longer get messed up. So now that we have our 3D object and camera set up, the next thing I want to do is take quick renders to figure out where we are and where we should be going. For this, let's switch over to the render view tab and here I'll start by selecting the camera. And we can just hit render and Houdini will just show us what kind of scene we have for now. And as you can see, the scene we have definitely does not look photorealistic. There are loads of problems and the main problem here is the lighting. And those of you who are just starting, please remember that a good lighting setup in your scene could either make or break your entire composite. So here, I need to take care of lighting first. And next, I also need to make sure I'm getting proper shadows to make it look like the object is actually sitting on top of the table. So these are the first two concerns and then we'll get back to a couple of more additional details we need to add in. So now first to add in the lights, I'll make sure that I have the preview button on here on the top and also that the pause button here in the render view is also active. What this means is that if I make any changes in my 3D scene, all the changes will be live updated here in the render view. So if I go back to my 3D scene, I'll turn the lock off from my camera, I'll navigate out and from the opposite side of the camera, well almost opposite side of the camera, I'll position a light. So I'll control click on the area light. Just like the camera, the light will be placed exactly where we are looking at it from. Now, if I go back to my render view, you can see that the light is falling and now the object is actually getting some shadows. But the object uh, face which is actually towards me is completely dark. I don't want this to happen so I'll put in a fill light also. So I'll navigate around a bit and coming closer to the camera I'll add in another area light. Control clicking on that and this creates another one and now in my render view we can see almost the whole cube is lit. Let's make a couple of tweaks on this light before finalizing on it. Now while making changes on these lights, I want to make sure that I know exactly what light is contributing to what kind of detail. So for that I'll just select the area light too and turn it off. So all the detail I'm looking at in the scene is contributed only by the area light one. Now one of the first things I want to do to make sure my composite looks realistic is to change the attenuation options. This just tells the computer how the light is supposed to dim down with distance. So just go to attenuation and select physically correct. This would usually make your entire scene look a lot darker. What you'll have to do is just go to light intensity and pump it up to a high value till you get a lighting system which you are comfortable with. So I'll just take it up to a high enough value so it looks good enough and because preview is on you can actually see the kind of result your whole setup is having on your scene. So a light intensity of 100 is giving me good enough results. So I'll go ahead turn this light off for now and I'll come back to the area light too. As you can see when both the lights are off I'm again back to the bland rendering I had before. Now with the area light 2 on I again get shadows on this side of the cube and this is basically a fill light so I don't want it to be too bright. Going to the attenuation option, again I tell it to be physically correct. My whole scene gets darker. I pump up the light till I have certain amount of detail coming across. So let's say about 40 in intensity. So I have two lights set up and I'm okay with this. I'll go back to the first light, turn that one on too. So I have two of the lights and I have all the details on the cube visible. Next thing I want to do, just to add in a bit more character to the scene or just because I can, is go to the area light one and this one I'm just going to tell it to have a little bit of a bluish tint to the entire thing. So as you can see the white has a little bit of a bluish tint coming in. I'm adding this because as you can see the reflections on this table have a slight bluish tint on them. Next, I'll go to the area light two and because I've added a bluish tint to the primary light, I'm going to add a warmer tint to the secondary light. So for this I'll just add in a bit more pink and yellow. So I'll also go ahead switch over to increase the saturation a bit more. Okay so I have two lights coming in and it's lighting up the cube. 
and obviously it does not yet look completely realistic and to make it a bit more realistic I need to add in some shadows. So in the next video I'm going to show you not only how to add the shadows but also how to put that on top of a background image to see how the final output might look once it's composited right here in the render view. So in the meantime if you guys have any doubts, critics or suggestions they're all welcome down here in the comment section below the video and I'll definitely get back to you. Also, I have linked in a special form in the description which you can fill out for any doubts or tutorial requests you might have and I'll try to make my tutorials based on top of them. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys have found it useful. I hope you also have a great time and I'll see you in the next one.